Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner CSS series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's move on to CSS floats. You can see I've got Visual Studio Code open. I have an empty frame for a page. We have absolutely nothing in the body of the page. And then the style page, the CSS, has an import of our Roboto font from Google Fonts. And we've only set styles on the body so far. We've set the font size to 1.5 rem, and we're using the Roboto font family. So quickly, if I pull VS Code over to the left, you can see our page is completely blank. I'll let VS Code take up the full size of the page again. And let's start by creating some elements in the body of the HTML that we can style. So I'm going to start off with the div and give it a class of block. After that, we can just put in the word float for now because we will apply a float to it. And then we're going to create some paragraphs. So I'll use an Emmet abbreviation here and type P for paragraph and then say times five, then the greater than symbol, lorem and 20, which means each paragraph will be lorem epsom, which is just generic verbiage we can put on a page for generic text content. And each paragraph will have 20 words. So when I press tab, it should create five paragraphs. And there we can save. Now let's go back and look at our page and see what we have so far. You can see our div has the word float in it, and there's nothing remarkable about that div. And then we see five different paragraphs here on our page. So that's a good start to having some content. But now we want to apply some CSS and explore what this float will actually do with the class of block. So to give that example, let's go back to our style and I'll hide the file tree by pressing control B. And now we'll be able to see most of our CSS here. So let's style this block class that we created for that div. I'm going to apply a width first and I'm going to set it to 30 viewport width units. And then I'm going to set a height and I'm going to make that also 30 viewport width units. Now you might wonder why I didn't use percent, but that wouldn't be the same. I wanted to use the exact same units for the width and height and create a square. And we'll be able to see that if I apply a background dash color and then set that to black and I save, we now have a square that is 30 viewport width units wide, and it also has the same height, which truly does make it a square. Okay, after that, I'm going to go ahead and apply a color so we can see that word float, and I'll make that white, just the opposite. So there's the word float. Now let's give it some padding, maybe one rem of padding. And there we have just a little bit of padding that pulls the word float out of the corner. But now our div and all of our paragraphs are block elements, and so they stack on top of each other. But when we float this div element that we've created here, it will take it out of the normal flow of the page, and we should see our text wrap around this, and you could picture this as being an image if you want to, but whatever content we would float, and we can float it left or right, the text will wrap. So let's create another class, and I'll just call this class left, and then inside of this we'll apply the style float, and we'll say left. And when we save, we don't get a change yet because we haven't applied it to our HTML, so let's go ahead and apply this second class to our div, and now save, and we can see the text has wrapped up around the div. So now it's more like you're used to seeing in a newspaper where you would have an image or something over to the left or the right, and the text would go around it. But now notice, this is flush, it's right up against it. We might want a little space there, and we need to talk about how to do that because your first instinct may be to apply some padding or margin to the paragraph, and I'll scroll for some more room. But let's just look at the margin left for the paragraph and say I applied 10 pixels. Look what happens. It still is flush here. You see it moved 10 pixels over here. This float is not inside the normal flow, so it, the margin is applied from the left over here and not where we would expect it to be 
at the left edge of our text. And we can see that even more so if I do something greater like say 20%. And now, yes, it moved this way over, but it didn't move the text here at all. So we can't really apply that correctly by applying it to the paragraph. Instead, we could apply some to the actual block itself. So let's do that, and we can say, well, let's do it to the left, because we might do it differently for the right. So let's do it to our left class here. So we would have a margin on the right side of, let's say one rem, we should be able to see that. And now that makes the difference that we wanted right here. And also it makes our text once again flush with what would be our image or our div that we currently have here on the left. Now I'm going to highlight our left class and then press Shift, Alt, and the down arrow to copy it down. And I'm also going to create a right class. I need to select that correctly. There we go. It's a right class. So instead of float left, it will be float right. But then instead of margin right, let's put a margin left on it. And I'll save, but we don't have it applied once again to any div. So we need to come back into our code. And let's say after we've gone down three paragraphs, we want to have one more. So we'll say div dot block dot write and that should apply those classes and it did so now we can save and we have another div and it's floated right and of course it is after the first three paragraphs and we see that one two three and then it begins here with our fourth paragraph and it's floated to the right now i didn't put the word float in there let's go ahead and do that just to make them alike and this is the basic use that we would have to float things to the left or the right. But there could become some instances when we want to handle this a little differently. Maybe we want to wrap this first paragraph and this div that I've floated to the left in a container and kind of highlight that at the top and then have the second paragraph start afterwards. We might have to handle that differently. Or let's say we didn't even have the container, but we didn't want this second paragraph to wrap. And in the past, it was handled a little differently than it currently is. So let's create one more class and I'll show you something you may see. Once again, I would say in more legacy code, let's call this a clear class. And then inside of this class, we'll say clear and we can say just right or just left if you want to clear something that is specifically floated left or right but it's very easy to just say both, and then it will clear both. And you'll see what this does in just a moment here. So what I need to do is come back, and then after the first paragraph, if I wanted to clear that, the old way would be to apply another div to the page and give it this class of clear, and just leave it empty, and we would save. And then you can see the second paragraph doesn't start until after this div, so it is cleared, and that allows us to go ahead and start the second paragraph after both of these. But this could still be a problem if we had this in a container, and I will show an example of that. So let's apply a container to the div and the first paragraph, and I'll just make it a section element, and wrap it around those. So I'll cut that closing tag and put it here after the first paragraph and save. Well, I want the formatting. It didn't do it for me. Tab that in and save. And then we can style our section to make it a little more obvious what's going on. I think I'll scroll up just a little bit more. There we go. And so now we have a section. And inside the section, I'll say uh, background color. And we'll give this a color of bisque, which is kind of a neat color. And after bisque, let's go ahead and apply a border. So we'll say border, one pixel, solid, give it a flat black color, and a little bit of padding, one rim. Okay, and let's save and see what we get. Well, this looks okay right now. I don't see a problem, but what if we removed this div with the class of clear and save. Well, still no problem. Let me shorten up this paragraph by several words and then see what we get. 
And now when I save, I just had too long of a paragraph to actually highlight the problem before. But now when I save, we can see the problem. This float is once again not in the normal flow of the page. So the container is only expanding based on the text content. And when I had more text content, it looked okay, but you can really highlight the problem if you don't have enough text content to push the container down. So we can definitely see a problem that needs to be rectified, and that is because we don't want the container to just go halfway. We want it to go ahead and contain the full item, the full element that we have floated left or right. So we think, why not go ahead and put that div back in place that had clear? Well, let's try that and see what happens. I've got the clear div there now, and you can see it clears the paragraph, but it doesn't help the container. So let's once again remove that div. I'll just press Control Z to undo those changes and Control S to save. So now the paragraph is coming back up and I will show two different ways to fix this. One past approach that you may see in code is to set the overflow to auto. But this is in more legacy code once again, but notice it does work, so I wanted to show that. Overflow auto is a possibility to go ahead and get the container element to extend all the way down and contain the full element that is floated either left or right. However, the correct current way, as uh, noted by MDN, is to say display and then say flow-root. And if we save that, we once again have fixed the problem. So if I remove that, save, we have the problem. I'll put the display flow root back in, and the problem is fixed. So this is considered the current modern way to fix this problem. In the past, floats were also used to create columns on a page, but that was because there was no other method available. And now with modern CSS, we do have other methods available, including display flex and display grid that I will be covering very soon in future modules. But right now, just remember floats are used to float things to the left and the right, really any element that you want to, and you can wrap text around it. And then you can also use floats inside of a container if you want to, but remember to uh, apply display flow root to the container so the container can contains the full floated element and doesn't shrink based on the text content alone. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.